Hello, everyone, and welcome to Season 3, uh, Episode 1 of Star Trek Fenrir. For those who are unfamiliar, Fenrir is a tabletop role-playing game that uses the Star Trek Adventures rule set. We are set in the year 2412 aboard a Cerberus class set in the Sabine Expanse. If you don't know what the Sabine Expanse is, it's basically that big chunk of space to the galactic west of Cardassian space. Now, you don't need to have watched our previous episodes to enjoy this one, as we have sort of returned to an episodic format. A uh, lot of feedback was sent in, and uh, we feel, not only as players, but also as viewers, that uh, episodic format works better. So we're transitioning back to that. So that way you can pick up any episode at any time, still have a good time. Uh, if you do want to catch the VODs, you can get them on YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions like Spotify and iTunes. I have two announcements this week. The first is that my newest Star Trek game, Star Trek Gengut, uh, finally airs its first session this coming Friday, June 5th at 2 p.m. Eastern. I would love it if you all were able to spread the word and turned out to support the new crew. The second one is a bit more, shall we say, heavy but I think it needs to be said. Uh, I just want you all to know that I'm hoping you all stay very safe and healthy out there with everything that's going on in the world. I did debate very heavily about following the Blackout Tuesday movement, but I decided it would be better to play tonight rather than to remain quiet and dark. Uh, the reasoning behind that, at least in the short form, is that I feel that games can be a very powerful form of entertainment and escape, no matter if you're playing or watching. So it's my hope that you know, you have a little bit of joy in your heart, you know, after seeing today's session. Uh, but with that bit of heaviness out of the way, let's brighten things up and have everyone go around and introduce themselves and their characters. So let's start with John. Hello, my name is John. Uh, I am playing Rast, the uh, half um, Romulan, half Betazoid, uh, and still first officer <laughs> of the uh, Fenrir. And I'm also playing a surprise backup character today that uh, will have his own little uniform and everything. So look for that. Very nice. Up next, James. Uh, my name is James. I play Lieutenant Zero. He is an Android uh, chief engineer. Um, I don't have a backup character yet, but I may in the future, depending on how things go. Very nice. Watney. I'm Watney. I play both Commodore Briarchaletta, the captain of the USS Fenrir, still. Um, and I play Dr. Alel, a Genobulan. And then Dag. Hey, everybody. I'm Dag. Uh, tonight, I will be playing two characters. I will be playing your favorite holographic Vulcan, Vassar, as well as your favorite Brooklyn Gorn, Zeke. And if you want to check out more of my antics, you can find me on Shrek Nexus at Twitter. All right. Up next, we have Mr. Williams. Hey, guys. Uh, I'm Aaron. I play Commander RJ Williams, Fenrir's still chief of security, and um, the unluckiest ensign in Starfleet, Ensign Jensen. Um, you can find me across all social media at Panorama Hint. Um, and I assume it's still Ensign uh, GM since I tried to arrest the captain. I don't know. Let's ask that real quick before we get to Matthew. Did Archuleta still promote Jensen? Yes. Congrats, Jensen you're now, now lieutenant. Ju yeah, junior <laughs> lieutenant. <laughs> and then junior grade or full lieutenant? Junior. 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 Right. I don't want the power go into his head. <laughs> That's the same as my uh, backup character. Gonna need a hollow pip there, Panorama Tim. Got one. It's just. Costume changes for everybody, I guess. Yep. And then last but not least, we have Matthew. Hi, everyone. I'm Matthew. I play a Bajoran science officer, Lieutenant Commander Lee on the Fenrir. He is struggling with his faith, but still clinging on to it because it's his sort of last vestige of connection with his departed son. And I also play a security officer, uh, the Hydran Lieutenant Commander Cartwright, who is remarkably officious and deferential. <laughs> Very nice. And with that, let's go ahead and run our introduction.
And welcome back. Now, something I'm going to start doing that's a little bit different than usual is for Season 3 and onward, I'm actually going to try and provide a uh, little title card for us to look at while the opening log is read. Now, normally, uh, I would have a player, n probably the, the Commodore, reading the opening log. But given that we've had a bit of a time skip and that there's a lot of uh, interpersonal things that I would rather come out, you know, in scenes, uh, we're actually going to have an opening log from a certain counselor, Solvi. So let me go ahead and push this button and I will begin reading that log. So Solvi's personal log, Stardate 89002.1. There's an old saying my mother is fond of, the right person in the wrong place can make all the difference in the world. Now I'm not saying that that person is myself on the Fenrir, but there are certainly days when it feels like it. The crew at large is still getting over the events of a few months ago regarding the Sean and the actions that the senior staff took in the heat of the moment. I won't sugarcoat things. Plenty of the crew is still questioning the senior staff's decisions, not to mention their own when the call to relieve the Commodore, uh, when the call came to relieve the Commodore from command. However, the important distinction is that a majority of the crew decided to stay aboard despite these issues. Only a total of 13 individuals requested a transfer after those events, which of course is their right. I'm still sort of sad to see them go though. In lighter news, I managed to secure an extended stay at Ryza for the Fenrir while the ship was being repaired. I thought it would be a better place than say Earth, Mars Space Dock, or even DS9. And though it not mandatory, I have heavily suggested that everyone aboard take shore leave on the Pleasure Planet. Most have taken to the idea, even the Commodore and Commander Rast have indulged, despite being the focal point of the aforementioned conflicts. I don't expect them to suddenly start inviting each other to dinner or anything, but it's good that they're able to work professionally after all that happened. Uh, one last thing before I sign off. Uh, I've told a certain individual who happens to be named Jensen that he seriously needs to work on his irrational fear of medical problems. To this end, I've told him to go to the holodeck with Ambassador Archer and confront his fears head on. I only hope that it will lead to progress and not something I have to devote more counseling times to. End log. And with that, we are going to transition to the holodeck. And in the holodeck is the Lieutenant Junior Grade Jensen along with Ambassador Archer, and as a reminder, or if you're new, Miss Archer is actually a 8472 Ambassador. You can find more about that in Season 2, but all you need to know is that she's an 8472, and there's a whole lot of play there when it comes to medical stuff. But uh, Jensen, go ahead and let's take it away. All right, so I put a lot of thought into this Ambassador, and I think, I think I've got it. I give to you subnucleonic encephalomalacia. Consent. <laughs> That's good. I like it. Uh, it's a very nasty uh, pathogen. Uh, thankfully, as far as I know, fictional. Uh, but. Uh, I don't know if I should be proud or not, but I seem to have a real knack for designing viruses. Well, I'm sure if we give you enough time, you'll become the uh, very image of a uh, bioweapon engineer. I... You think I missed my calling? Hmm, potentially. Don't well, worry, Watney. We'll fix cameras in a second. Right. <laughs> Subnucleon cephalomalacia. Uh, to explain, the virus attacks the connecting introns between subnucleonic particles of a cell, um, in essence, softening them on a subatomic level, uh, hence encephalomalacia, not quite a medically accurate term, I'm sure if I asked uh, Commander Lee, he would balk at my use of the term, but I think it rather poetically fits, it softens those links much like uh, standard physical encephalomalacia softens uh, brain tissue after trauma. Uh, so what we'll see uh, after 24 hours, a uh, 
complete and total loss of uh, muscle control, uh, further 36 hours, complete and total lack of consciousness within 72 hours, uh, total cellular disintegration. So Archer sort of raises a hand as if to say something, lowers it, moves that hand to her chin, scratches it a little bit, finally says, I'm... I don't know whether to be impressed or scared that you went that far. I mean, I thought the whole exercise was just you to create a virus, not a legitimate bioweapon. Well, I mean, I, I, I would never, I would never dream of using it for that purpose, but the, the council was very specific. She said to create something that I would be terrified of, and I would be terrified of this. Jensen, honey. I say this as respectfully as I can. I've been aboard for the better part of a year. You're scared of the color green. You could have simply made the virus turn you green. Spins. Is that scared me. I thought there was some in the room. But I've specifically programmed this simulation to not include the color green in, in any way. Um, so I suppose then I shouldn't really get into the fact that this can be transmitted on a subspace carrier wave then. Archer does the same sort of pose I'm doing where she's got her finger up, mouth like slow, slightly ajar. Finally says, computer, please create a green ball. I don't care what size and throw it at Mr. Jensen and I'll spend threat to do this. A ball like a dodgeball just materializes and just pelts Jensen in the side of the head. Uh, very good. Well, he will drop to the ground shrieking. Um briefly before collecting himself and skittering on all fours away from the ball uh, about two meters and then standing up, dusting off his knees and saying, Ambassador, I think that was fairly uncalled for. Yes, but it was funny. And you confronted your fear. I think we I think we're gone to something. Computer! More dodgeballs. And as we pull away from the scene like more balls keep appearing and just start being thrown at, at Jensen. Um, but before we do the, the scene transition, let's uh, quickly redo the cameras. So everybody but Rast and Matic, you can leave yours on. Uh, so up next is the captain, then Vassar, then Williams, then Lee. Yay, we're all back to where we should be. All right, so we are now going to transition to the <laughs> transporter room where several people are present. We have Petty Officer Zeke, obviously manning the transporter. Uh, we also have Commander Williams and Lieutenant Junior Grade Cartwright there to greet a new security crew member. Uh, all you need do, Mr. Williams, is tell Zeke to press the shiny button. Mr. Zeke, energize. All right, and John, as this character appears, why don't you go ahead and reveal what we've been hiding from Dag? Hey, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> hey, you're from the same place? Where'd you grow up? I grew up in Queens. Queens, I love it there this time of year. How's Macielli's Deli? Oh, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty good. I like pizza. I love the pizza too, but Macielli's, man, it fills my stomachs. It's so good. Hey, so, so I'm supposed to report to a Commander Williams. Yes, uh, Lieutenant Tavi, I assume. Yeah. Uh, Williams will offer a hand in, in greeting and say, "Welcome aboard." I'm Commander Williams. Uh, you came very highly recommended. Oh, well, that's good. For those who can't see, by the way. Uh, Rast is, well, John is basically puppeteering a actual, like, stage puppet, complete with Starfleet uniform. Trust me, if you've got, like, five seconds, just pull up the VOD. We're 15 minutes in. Just look it up. You'll laugh. It's great. Anyways, continue. So, uh, you know, I heard there was some real fun stuff going on in this ship. Well, there's but... poker night and karaoke night. And then, um, sometimes, uh, we get to go swimming in the holodeck and uh, they got a really good program for Zald and uh, a bunch of the crew just went to Risa, but we got some good programs for Risa. 
Um, and then there's uh, Free the Vulcan Slaves. It's a new thing from Ferengi. I don't understand what's going on there. Oh, hey, I, I heard every now and then you have Mutiny Night. Well, Cartwright would step forward. Uh, <laughs> I could actually speak about that directly, given that I was the one who put down the attempted mutiny. Um, yes, we, we do occasionally have some unrest among the crew, but um, I must say that Commander Williams is an impeccable chief of security, and uh, you will enjoy working under him. You learn a tremendous amount. After all, just in the last uh, engagement that we had with Shan, of which you're no doubt aware, um, I targeted several quantum torpedoes at the weapon stores on board the Shan troop transport, um, thereby setting off a chain reaction that destroyed the entire facility. Uh, obviously, I took advantage of or the uh, uh, inspiration from Commander Williams. In fact, it's uh, now colloquially known as the Williams Maneuver. Oh, is that where he blew up that Ferengi ship? Yes, exactly. Yeah, I read a, about that. Quite a clever That's tactic. pretty cool. Gentlemen. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, hey, sir. <laughs> Hello, Lieutenant. Um, <laughs> Lieutenant Cartwright, will you do the honor of uh, escorting Lieutenant Tavi uh, to his quarters and maybe provide him with a tour of the ship in his working area? I'd be delighted, sir. Although um, I did wish to converse briefly with uh, Crewman Zygatherix, if that's uh, all right with you. Of course. Uh, well, then allow me to take the the first little bit. Um, Lieutenant Tavi, if you'll follow me, I'll show you to your quarters. Yeah, no problem. See you uh, around, Tavi. Hey, it was nice to meet you. Mr. Cartwright, meet us at the armory at your earliest convenience. Very good, sir. So Williams and Tavi step out, leaving Mr. Cartwright and Mr. Zeke. And I really hope he doesn't find my Scacciarelli pizza recipe. I only have so many credits a month I can use for that. I'm afraid, Crewman, that I have no idea what you're referring to. It's a replicator thing. What's going on? Uh, yes, um, I just wish to converse with you regarding some of the security concerns that I had about the, um, well, your family members. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, what, what's happening? Well, Did you, 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 a mess again? you transported, um, I believe, several hundred um, <laughs> lower life forms on board the vessel roughly a few months ago. Um, not, not that I mean to imply that you yourself are a, a lower life form, uh, given that you are a reptile, and uh, regardless. Um, They're like cousins of cousins, cosmic cousins, but yeah, there's George, Frankie, Yvette, yeah, are they breeding again? Do I gotta hunt some eggs down? Are there nests everywhere? What's going on? Well, it's not that they are breeding, fortunately. Um, we have implemented some mandatory sterilization procedures amongst some of them. But um, it's that uh, some of them escaped captivity recently. Um, I was conducting some uh, routine patrols on the lower decks when I heard a noise in one of the cargo bays and turned to investigate. When I entered, um, one of your relatives um, was off in the distance. I attempted to intercept and apprehend it, only to realize that it was a, a ruse of some kind. I was uh, attacked from the side uh, by, it seemed to be some kind of female matriarch of your relatives. She was a very clever girl, um, just leapt upon me, and I believe tried to consume me. Yeah, that's a vet. She's just playing around. She knows how to operate the replicator with a snout. They got to ah. practice, though, so uh, you know what I could do is I could just put hours on when they're practicing and then inform security that, like, I'll just keep watching my op shifts. Well, I'm certain that all of us, particularly uh, Lieutenant Tabby, considering that he would be um, a, a rather convenient meal, given his size, uh, would be most grateful if you could inform security of their movements um, and maybe their their level of satiety or satiation. I, I, I don't want them eating any crew members, please. I got you. Uh, I'm you. spending two threat that all of you in the transport room here outside a commotion, along with, why is there a raptor eating me? Why? Hold on. Energizing. And uh, Zeke will attempt to beam her back into the cargo bay uh, that is them 
right, you know what? Let's make this an actual roll because I oh find it God. funny and because we need to have somebody do the first roll of season three. All right, so hey, you guys. are doing... Oh, go ahead, sorry. No, nah, I was just saying, all right, guys, I'm doing this. All right. Before all 20s. Yeah, I was going to say, in before all 20s. All right, so the way this is going to work, it's going to be your standard uh, transporter's task. That, of course, is going to be a control and an engineering. Uh, after doing all the modifiers, the difficulty will be a 2. And if someone could get the Fenrir sensors and engineering. And uh, I'm going to specialize or focus in transport of foo. Yep, that'll definitely apply. I'll get the ship. How right. tall is Tavi? Yeah, how tall is Tavi? He's a two and a half feet tall. What? Two and a half feet. Okay. <laughs> okay. Perfect. I got this. Yeah, so with uh, four successes overall, uh, materializing wow. on the transporter pad is in fact a uh, small raptor, which I will allow Zeke to actually describe the genus and such, but there is a raptor there. So yeah, it's it's basically uh, your standard uh, three and a half to four foot tall uh, velociraptor, um, blue feathers uh, running down from the back of the head down the spine to the tail, um, kind of confused, clicking, um, and and Zeke's just like Yvette, what have I told you about leaving the quarters? No <laughs> preying on the officers. You're only allowed to play with me. Now, don't look at me like that. I'm not going to be doing this anymore. Um, uh, Lieutenant Catwright, um, I might need a moment alone with my buddy here. And he just walks out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the oh, camera right. does follow you uh, as you walk out of the room as we actually switch to the interior of a runabout on its way back from the surface of Ryza. Now, as far as runabouts go, uh, this any further apart. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the runabout is very empty. The only yeah. occupants are the Commodore and Commander Rast. Uh, Commodore is handling things in the back and Rast, you are just piloting the runabout. Uh, but let's focus on Archuleta first. So, Archuleta, I believe you wanted to address a few things with the other captains of your fleet first. Yes. Yes. Okay. Am I going to be speaking to them live? You will, yes. Okay. You just need to great. tell me which one you want to talk to first. Um, Let's talk to Venleth, my favorite. All right. So, appearing <laughs> on uh, your view screen is, of course, the... Emerald-haired, uh, golden-horned Serato Draco, uh, Captain Vinleth, and she says, "Ah, uh, Commodore, good to see you. How how is everything? Everything uh, still working out between you and the first officer?" Uh, so Bree will like lean back to look to see if like he maybe could have she could like see him at all. Is he piloting? He's piloting. Okay, she's like, I think uh, we're making progress. Oh, that's good. That's good. I mean, I uh, I almost stabbed my first officer the other day. Uh, long story short, uh, he stole a bottle from me that he shouldn't have. But details, uh, what, what 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 can I do you for? <laughs> well, it sounds like things are pretty exciting on the Okita. Um, how did you find the Tholian border or coming close to it? Uh, to be honest, uh, I almost was expecting the Tholian response to be a bit more, well... I mean, it wouldn't be overwhelming, so well. You were whelmed. There we go. The Yeah. All right. Um, well, this might be a little more interesting, hopefully not for their sake, but um, your next mission is to find the USS Missouri. It's an old Miranda class that has gone missing. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, just go ahead and uh, send coordinates and we'll set out, set out right away. Sounds good. Anything else to report while I have you? Well, uh, don't tell anyone I told you this, but uh, I hear that uh, Boothby back on Earth is having a retirement ceremony a few weeks from now. I was never particularly close to him, but um, I'll make sure the rumor gets around without you having said it. That's what I like to hear. Captain yeah. out. And uh, view screen goes dark. Cool. 
Um, we'll do I'm on T. All right. So appearing uh, pretty much where Captain Vinleth was appears the Betazoid uh, gentleman, Iman T. Now, Iman T has sort of scarring that runs across his face, starts up at the bridge of his nose, comes down across his mouth. Uh, very battle-scarred individual, but, uh, you know, he smiles and says, Commodore, to what do I owe the pleasure? Uh, how did you find the uh, subspace shockwave mission I sent you on? So, funny thing about that, Commodore, it wasn't so much uh, anomaly as it was uh, an experimental weapon test from the Sheliak Corporation. I must have missed that in your report. Wow. <laughs> I I thought I I apologize if if that was not in the report that that's a gross oversight on my part. I'm sure it was. I've been dealing with a lot, as I'm sure you know. Um, well. It sounds like you made it out just fine. Anything else to report from that mission? You know, he looks up at the ceiling for a little bit, thanks. Finally goes, well, there was a, a strange bout of uh, replicator failure, but I didn't feel that was worth noting at the time. All right, good. Just making sure everything's on the up and up. Uh, I have a primary and secondary mission for you. Um, sending to your console now, but the first one is of utmost importance regarding the Azeth. One of their colony ships is experiencing warp drive problems, and I need you to go there and assist them. I can do that. Uh, the other task or tasks? This one is a little more leisurely. Um, there's two suns and a binary star getting ready to collide and merge. So if you would go observe that, record any novel findings... We would all appreciate it. Sure, we can't go do the binary thing first, because I'm not going to lie. We've got the best sensors in the fleet. Well, uh, I, I would think that we could time that pretty closely, so... Well, again, you're Commodore. I'll go where you tell me to go. I just... <laughs> it, would, it would be a shame if we missed the collision. That's all I'm saying. Oh. Uh, is it a lot closer? You know, he taps on his side console. It's not particularly far. We probably could just QSD over once we help the Azeth. Uh, I mean, I'll make it work. I'll tell you what, Commodore. I'll make it work. Don't you worry about it. All right. I, I trust you. You have discretion in regards to the timing. Thank you very much. Is there anything else I can do for you, Commodore? No, that's all. Thank you for your efforts. Very good. Captain out. And then last but certainly not least, are you going to actually call your favorite captain in the fleet, Captain Zine? Um, sure. <laughs> okay. So in stark contrast to the rest of the fleet's captains, uh, Captain Zine is a Aurelian. Or do we make an Aurelian? Or No, he's score. a score. That's right. Score. Yeah. Um, so he's a score, uh, white feathered. Uh, mechanical wings, though. He doesn't have biological wings. They're all almost prosthetic. And he just has his arms crossed across his chest. Doesn't say anything. He just sort of stares at you intensely. Well, um, Captain Jean, that's how you say it, right? Jean? Sure. Okay. Uh, I understand I pulled you away from the last mission I gave you to assist us. Um, so I will accept the failure there. However, I have two more missions to send you on. The primary important um, mission is a uh, there's a class M planet that is pre-warp <laughs> Um, and, uh, you're going to go see if you can help them. They're asking for allies, basically. I'll send you more details. Okay. Um, and the secondary mission is a Ferengi who is trying to sell perfect dilithium. And I thought that would be a good mission to send you on. He, like, taps his ear hole for a moment and says, I'm sorry, the Universal Translator must have glitched. You said something about perfect dilithium? Mm-hmm. Commodore, I know we're not on the best terms, but is this a prank? 
There's no such thing. Do we have a joking relationship, Captain? No, but I think it's better than me insulting you again and you getting all mad about it. Yeah, I would say so. Cool. We're on it. And then he cuts communications. Great. We love you, Captain Zine. We, we love you so much. <laughs> so mean. But uh, it is a... Rast is just shaking his head up front. And Rast, I'm actually going to ask you a question. Uh, what is your engineering score? Uh, oh, not no. good. <laughs> um, that would be a one, sir. Gotcha. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend a th <clears throat> few threat here. All of a sudden, the engines of the runabout begin to die. And the runabout comes to a complete stop midway between the ship, the Fenrir, and the planet of Ryza. So you're just sort of hanging in space right now. And uh, Ras, why don't you give me an insight engineering difficulty of two? Okay. Helm operation? <laughs> mm, sure, I'll give it to you. Why not? Yeah, why not? Not that it matters. You have, a, you have an engineering of one, so... Mm -hmm. Hey, you hey still look at that. Two successes. Very nice. <laughs> so I have good news and I have bad news. Which would you like first? Uh, I'll, I'll take the bad news. The bad news is that somebody in engineering didn't properly, properly do maintenance on the warp core of the runabout. What this means is that your dilithium crystals have not only cracked, but are otherwise unable to reconstitute themselves. So you're basically out of a catalyst for your matter-antimatter reaction at the moment. The good news is that you have about six hours of breathing time with the secondary reactors. And, uh, oh, look at that. I'm spending threat. More bad news. Your communications are offline. Commodore, um, do you have a moment? Yep. She'll come, like half jogging up what's up so it appears that uh someone did not uh complete the required maintenance on this shuttle and uh well we're at impulse i believe not even impulse everything uh, except we're, emergency life we're is. we're floating um we've got about six hours of life support uh communication is down and uh yeah yeah so um, don't really have any good news in this particular situation. <laughs> uh, remind me why we didn't take transporters again. Are you asking me or are you asking Rast? I'm asking Rast. <laughs> Was it because I don't like them? Is oh, that okay. why? <laughs> you, you had requested a shuttle. I thought it would extend the vacation just a little bit. And, and it has effectively done that, ma'am. Right. Well, um, I wonder if we can <laughs> wave out the window, see if anybody notices us. We don't have any comms? Uh, yes, communications are down. All right. Um, she's going to press her badge a couple times just to be sure. Yeah, only person you're reaching is Mr. Rast. <laughs> He'll press his badge. Rast here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't... I'm tired of being made fun of today, okay? All right. I was just trying Let's... to make light of the situation. I know, Rast. God. Um, okay. What let's let's problem solve here. What do we have any inert? inertia that's carrying us through space did we just stop dead in the water what is our current speed i would like you to roll me an insight con difficulty of one this i think you have a good shot at and yes home operation would apply hey wow. look at that yeah you're captain momentum good job 
So, uh, good news. Uh, your orbit is not decaying, but oh, look, the GM has threat. It's now decaying. Gosh, dang it. <laughs> well, on the bright, uh, um, well, uh, do the sensors work? Yeah, you've got sensors. I'll give you that. I'm going to um, see if the planet is, uh, you know, what are we looking at planet wise? Well, I mean, you've uh, you've got the nice planet of Ryza, balmy, 76 degrees Fahrenheit. I forget what that is in Celsius. Crucify me later. Uh, you know, it's uh, oh, always Oh, so sunny. we could potentially get back to Ryza. And crash land. You yeah. could crash land on a pleasure planet, yes. <sighs> and right. to give you a time frame... You would your orbit would decay at the four hour mark. So you would have basically two hours after you fix your orbit to fix life support. Um, did we tell anybody we were leaving? I will Rast roll a dice. Or, or no, if if, yeah. if Rast wants to say go ahead, Rast. <laughs> uh, Rast would have uh definitely followed protocol in this okay. particular case. So, so I would say Williams probably knows then. And how how long until he is actually expecting us? I'm just gonna spend threat. He's not expecting you for another eight hours. <laughs> so he is not expecting us for another eight hours. Uh, by then, um, we will be at minus two hours of life support. Do we have any EV suits here? You do. Okay, we should try and repair. If we can't repair, first, just we can try and get the comms up. That's like the number one thing, and someone could pick us up. And then if we can't do any of that, then we put on AV suits and would you do uh... pull a pull a into darkness. So you would like me to focus on the comms first? Yes. Very well. All right. And we're going to cut away from that and move to our next scene. This time, we're going to be in main engineering with Lieutenant Zero. So, Mr. Zero, uh, you, of course, have been doing your regular maintenance of the warp core while... Uh, you're basically in Stardock. You know, it's a good time to actually get inside the dilithium chamber, do all the scrubbing, do all the realigning, et cetera, et cetera. Um, everything's going well. Your engineers are, for the most part, doing their jobs. Uh, but one in particular uh, doesn't seem to be doing well. Uh, let's call him Ensign Martinez. Uh, Martinez is one of the new arrivals to your crew. And he's moving, shall we say, very hesitantly. Like... He consults his data pad like once, starts doing something, stops, looks at his data pad again, looks back at what he's working on, looks back to the data pad, fidgets a little bit more, goes back to the data pad. You get the idea. Martinez, did you just graduate from the academy? Uh, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. This is my first assignment out of the academy. And... You keep referencing your data pad. Why? I want to make sure I'm doing my best, sir. I, I would want to make sure I'm following your protocol. My protocol is get the job done in the time I tell you. And um, he'll reach to try to snatch the data pad out of the out of his hand. Yeah, I, I don't think he's even I don't think he's even anticipating it. So, yeah, you snatch it. No problem. Damn. You can ask for help. It tends to make things go quicker. Uh, of course, sir. Um, no offense. Can can you tell me what frequency you prefer these at? Like, I know standard Starfleet frequency is thirty-seven six point two, but you, Fenrir does it differently. Um, I want to look at the data pad and just kind of gauge what he's doing and where he's at. Okay, basically, he is uh, redoing some of the isolinear chips that handle the workload to terminals in main engineering so it is probably for the best that he's double checking 
usually what we'll do is stick with the Starfleet regulation. Any changes made are typically uh, added to the consoles themselves, as you'll see over here. Um, he'll point to the sensors um, and like scratched underneath the like scratched onto the uh, plate that covers the chips and all that is the current frequency that's used. And then there's several other frequencies that are like crossed out. So he looks at it and says, oh, well, thank you for telling me about that, sir. Uh, may I ask a question? Go ahead. Why did you scratch it and not use something like a, a, a wet erase marker? I had to take over from a commander medic who was very unique in his approach. Wait, the same Matic that's required reading in Temporal 101 back at the Academy? Who wrote his own book? Yes. Actually, no. This one was his trials. All, and he pauses to think, 33 of them, if I remember correctly, sir. I mean, working under him, there are more trials than that, but those are the, those are probably the best examples. Right. Uh, well, thank you for showing me what frequency to use, sir. I'll, uh, I'll get back to work. You cut out there. Oh, me. did I? For me, you did. Uh, okay. Yeah. Basically, he's like, I, I got what you said, sir. Appreciate you showing me the frequency. Is it okay if I go back to work? Go ahead. If you need help, there's plenty of other engineers who have been here who know how things work. Of course, sir. And our next scene is going to be one that I keep throwing on screen for some reason, but we all love it. It's time for another little bit of Vassarcher. <laughs> so, uh, Lieutenant Commander Vassar and Valerie Archer are once again in six aft enjoying a uh, the sights of Ryza in the background. Uh, however, uh, Vassar, uh, remember how we talked off screen about uh, certain things? The catalyst that you mentioned will happen during role play. I'll let you introduce it as you choose. You're muted. Understood. All right. So, uh, Archer sort of looks over at you, uh, Vassar, and says, so this is going to sound like a really weird question, dear, but um, you know that Jensen guy, right? Lieutenant, Lieutenant Junior Grade Jensen. Yeah, Lieutenant Junior Grade Jensen. Uh, did you know that apparently he uh, was really good at designing bioweapons? That would be news to me. Well... To put it bluntly, the counselor had me sit in on one of his therapy sessions. I guess you could call it that. And uh, instead of making some benign virus that would turn him green or something that was, you know, just, just something basic, something he didn't have to worry about, he basically made a dissolving virus that eats away at your cellular structure and, and causes you to disintegrate on the spot after 48 hours. I, the man has surprising talent and it's scary. It would seem that his application aboard the vessel is underutilized. Perhaps Are you suggesting that he moved to science? Science, sick bay, engineering. Also, I see you one true pairs in chat. I see you. And, and Archer uh, just sort of uh, thinks for a moment and says, well, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, it, what is Starfleet protocol for this sort of thing? I, I am at a loss. There is no particular regulation against designing bioweapons as a hobby. It is protected under Federation Articles for Freedom of Speech. What may not be protected, dear, is you locking me out of my 
templates so that a Hawaiian shirt manifests in the place of my uniform. Don't lie, you love it. That is not the point. When the captain returns, it will be necessary for me to don the requisite attire. So what you're saying is I should mess with the hollow emitters to give her a Hawaiian shirt too. You are an ambassador and are protected by certain diplomatic immunities. However, and she touches your shoulder mid set and says, honey, I'm joking. I will have to get used to that. Would you like a drink? Please. The Tsar will go to the replicator and order the usual and bring it back. Mm -hmm. And it's right about then, because it might be mistaken for something else. Um, Vassar actually coughs. Like, <coughs> actually coughs. And, you know, Archer looks at you and says, I'm, are you all right? Is that your doing? You mm. did touch my shoulder. No, but why, why would you cough? I mean, you're, you're, no offense, you're a hologram. I don't think holograms cough. I would need to be programmed to cough. I believe I need to go to the science lab to run a complete diagnostic. Our research is understandably cut short. No, that that's okay. I, I don't mind. Uh, should I go ahead and call Zero and Lee to meet you there? That would be a, <coughs> a good idea. Here, I'll I'll walk you there to make sure you get there properly. And uh, Vassar and Archer, you know, both of you stand up. You know, Vassar still coughing as they walk down the hallway. Uh, before we get to the science lab, though, uh, I want to do one very quick scene in the armory. Because I would find it very funny if Williams has taken the moment to show a certain Tavi uh, how to properly charge a certain power pack. Wait for him to get ready. I love it. Every time the puppet comes on screen, I love it. Oh, hey, this is pretty nice. It's nice and clean. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's, you know, it's homey. I like it. Um, but really, what I wanted to do was just make sure you were up to spec on proper ordnance maintenance. Oh, yes, sir. Well, hey, grab one of those hand units and show me what you got. Do a Give me a full field stripping and um, spot charge. Yes, sir. So he's, he's going to you know, take it all apart. Yeah, he's like whistling and he's... Oh, uh, and then this part goes over here, and then, it, and then uh, the rabbit chases the squirrel down the hole, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's all done. All right, just inspect his work. Yeah, uh, uh, Tavi, why don't you go ahead and roll me a control security, uh, difficulty of one. Now, I'm not saying I'm hoping for 20, but 20 would be pretty funny. And, uh, you know, I have uh, small arms technology. Oh, yeah, that would apply. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Blessed RN Jesus. We pray to you this day. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, so, Williams successfully reassembled the phaser. I'm going to let you decide what the complication is, though. So, why exactly are you using a phased inversion pulse to charge that power pack? Oh, because that's how we, uh, you know, that's how we do it. Yeah. You do things different here? Well, y yeah. Um, do you want to have another look at that power pack? It's glowing pretty ominously. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, let me take it back apart. Sure. And uh, we're just going to take a couple of steps back. Down the hole <laughs> and, uh, and then, uh, oh, yeah, that's what I forgot. 
And then the rabbit eats the worm. Yeah. Okay, here it is. This time it is correct, Williams. I always forget the worm part. I, I mean, hey, happens to the best of us, I guess. Yeah, sorry, I, I, yeah, I'm a little nervous. Well, I mean, you don't have anything to be nervous about. Your, your record's exemplary. You came very highly recommended. As a matter of fact, I had to fight to get you aboard. Oh, well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I mean, you know, it's not very often that you uh, actually get to work for somebody that has a maneuver named after them. Is that actually getting around? Oh, yeah. I see. Oh, and yeah, just so you know, you know, it's just shit that happens. Mm. Pardon my uh, Italian. Uh, well, you know, it's funny because the uh, the counselor warned me that this might happen. So you know, I've been trying to trying to get ready for it, and uh, you, you know, as far as it is. Your delivery, you know, it it was better than I expected. Hey, you know, it's it's pretty cool being able to, you know, say that I work for somebody that's famous. Famous or infamous? You know, it's a little bit of both. All hmm. right, then. Hey, I, I was thrilled to get this assignment. And then to find out that you asked for me? Holy shit. Oh, I mean, sorry. No, I mean, it's fine. Oh, just, okay, cool. Listen, I got, I, I may have three pips on the collar, but I work for a living just like you. Yes. Let's, why don't we, you know what? Why don't we head on up to the bridge and calibrate the security station for you? We can set up a preset for you so that when you come on, yeah, you don't have to do it every time. Oh, that's wonderful. Do you, I also heard that the Fenrir has this, uh, that self-elevating platforms. Yeah, you know, we we haven't actually had to, to try that at Tactical. This is going to be really exciting. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I mean, let's 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 head on up there for now. And I'm going to lap my comm badge and uh, say, Williams to Cartwright. Uh, yes, sir. How may I assist you? Uh, just a, a change of plans. Um, Lieutenant, meet us on the bridge. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, may I ask why? Oh, we're just going to we're going to calibrate the tactical station uh, for Tavi. Sort of the oh. same as we did with you when you first came on board. Yes, of course. Those presets for the Gorn are remarkably uh, handy, I believe. Uh, if you get the joke, the <laughs> little bit of humor there to lighten the mood, sir. <laughs> Very good, Carrot. We'll see you on the bridge. B Very good, sir. I right. tell you, I've always liked the new starships. All of those customizable uh, options. And this baby's got it all. You know, I, I, I tend to agree with you, but I kind of miss some of the older designs. I mean, just, it's really hard to be just for sheer grandness. You know, like the, the galaxy class. We don't. I feel like our generation doesn't have that. Maybe the Odyssey class. I don't know. I was on one of the older ships uh, recently. You might have saw it on my record, but it kind of sucked walking around with a stool all the time. Yeah, now that I, yeah, yeah, no, they they maybe weren't built with. I'm sorry, Lieutenant. What what's your species again? I'm a ratkin. Right. I, I don't know if those older ships were built with ratkin in mind. I mean, when did the when did the Ratkin homeworld join the Federation? Oh, we haven't. Oh, you're 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 an exchange. Yeah, I'm an exchange student. I love it. Let's go to the bridge. Real quick yeah. though, as you start to leave, there is the sudden sound of like an air beeping at one of the uh charging consoles. And you turn and look, Williams, and the you know, like the display above where the charging station is, says enter command code. Ah, oh, that can't be good. Yeah, that's that's atypical. Um, GM, what 
like what's the sort of interface like is this showing a display that should not be here so the display is because every my Just understanding like standard is cars. yeah standard l cars you know it's it's not like uh Oh, I'm looking at a pad and suddenly, you know, I have bridge command, but this is this is just standard L cars, which is showing a please enter in a command code type thing. But still very much atypical for you in your own armory. That's weird. Um I'll enter my code. And the computer chimes and beeps at you and says, Please provide commander Matic source code or not. Uh, authorization code to charge power packs nine, seven, and twenty-two. Oh, bitch. I think it, it's not supposed to do that. No. You know, we'll deal with this later. Let's let's get you set up on the bridge first. <laughs> yes, right. sir. So, uh, before we get to the science lab scene, we're going to check back in with our friends on the runabout. See ya. So, for Archuleta and Rast, uh, tell me a little bit about your thought process on how you're going to start uh, enacting the repairs. So, Rast is trying to look, uh, trying to examine what else could uh, potentially you know, been the catalyst for this. And is there a, another potential way to get any sort of propulsion out of what's left? An interesting thought. Also, I'm seeing 400 people. Hi, 400 people. What? I've never had 400 people before. So, hi. Hi. Uh, sorry, back on task. So, uh, Ras, I'd like you to give me a insight engineering. Archuleta, you may assist him with your own insight engineering. Okay. Maybe gonna use one of those little uh, cool momentums. Probably a good idea. Oh, I didn't tell you the difficulty. Uh, difficulty of three. Yeah, I figured. I don't think I have a focus. Oh yeah, I know I don't have a focus. Okay. For this. <laughs> hey, there's one from the captain. Ah, oh, look at that. Four successes, which means you get the momentum right back. So I have a few theories, but of course feel free to make up your own. Uh what you could do is you could route the fusion reactor into the uh thrusters and achieve basic impulse. I mean, you wouldn't be going full impulse, but I'll have to get you going. Uh, or what you might do is you could reroute all power from life support to the fusion generator and possibly kickstart the thruster units. Uh, alternatively, you could perform a spacewalk and, you know, try to do a little bit of manual routing out there. Now, you're probably thinking, well, ELH, why would we do a spacewalk if we can just stay inside and push a few buttons? Uh, to sort of peel back the curtain a little bit, because I find spacewalks cool, uh, spacewalk would be at a lower difficulty. That's what I would say. But no matter what you're doing, high difficulty involved. I do believe that there might be a possibility of uh, re uh, shunting the power flow through the one of the external coupling units and uh uh did you say external yes ma'am okay but in in either case if it, if it doesn't work your life support total will go up a little bit yeah let's not let it come to that please but there's no reason for both of us to go out there so uh you know i'm gonna suit up and uh Head out and see if we can take care of that. All right. Clay is uh, going to be looking I'll, for. Oh, go ahead. I'll communicate to you when I need you to press the gas. Okay. So to speak. Can he do that? Yeah, I mean, you you can talk to each other like on local your comms. Is yeah. Good. Okay. Um, Bree is going to be devising kind of like a light signal, if possible. Okay. Any kind of like 
console around that might help or even if it was just like jerry rigged or something well if you'd like to jerry rig we can make it a roll yeah I'll all right try. so rast as you suit, suit up and start to head into the airlock uh archuleta why don't you give me a daring engineering difficulty of two and here comes the complication yeah i'll say now here comes the complication um composure i'm kidding <laughs> maybe later maybe later um, oh okay good news though no complications so you you know you push a few buttons redo a few chips maybe cross a few wires doesn't work but the console still works so small plus you kind of hear yeah. that windows error beep um mm -hmm. <laughs> You rolled two 11s. That's impressive. You were off by impressive. one. <laughs> and uh, I tell you what, let's cut away to keep things dramatically appropriate. Let's go to the science lab where we have uh, Vassar, Lee Tobin, and Lieutenant Zero. Uh, Archer has decided to wait outside because apparently she has some form of anxiety regarding a certain Vassar, which you may or may not rib him for in the future. But uh, you are all in the, currently in the middle of basically running a diagnostic on Vassar's program. Well, Lieutenant Commander, um, I'm running this dag. recursive sort of that. This uh, recursive algorithm search through your subroutines, uh, I, it's a, an incredibly complex web work that has uh, culminated in your program after all these centuries. So it's rather difficult to tease out anything that on a programming level might be responsible for the abnormal behaviors that you've noted. Can it be removed? I'm not sure we even know what it is yet. We don't know Why? at what point if at any point it was included into the program and we don't know if this is a original coding that like how uh lieutenant commander data uh oh you cut out there james apparently zero has fallen silent what must we do he's muted I am familiar with Commander Data's dream program that randomly manifested after being dormant for so many years. <laughs> but I believe if you compare <coughs> the scans you are taking now with my recent first love diagnosis, you will find that this web work was not present. <coughs> All right. Uh, can we make a comparison between the program as it exists now and the one that was uh, investigated when we initially removed that Borg virus that had, uh, I believe, infiltrated his program earlier on? You certainly may. And in fact, I will give you that advantage for free because you mentioned it. Uh, so that will lower the original difficulty of five down to a four. Um, so Lee, uh, you're going to be rolling a control Actually, I'll say it could be either control or insight, and it will be paired with engineering. And the computer itself on the Fenrir will assist with a computers and engineering. And if Zero can get his stuff working again, he can, of course, assist. Okay. Um, I would recommend that he actually lead this, but unfortunately, because Matic is not available, or um, I will spend three dice or uh, three momentum to buy two extra dice okay i don't believe that i have a uh, a focus in that uh i'm not seeing one on your sheet that i think would apply unfortunately so that would be uh 40 20 yep and the, sorry the difficulty was again the difficulty is four I have the ship. Okay. So. Focus. Okay. So we have uh, two successes and a complication so far, and another complication oh, from Vasa from uh, from the Fenrir. 
Interesting. Well, uh, you can maybe get rid of one of those if you spend determination to reroll, but I think you're getting at least one complication no matter what you do. Yeah, I do have to sell you on a value, though, to... Uh... To do the determination, yeah. Yeah. Um, let me say that I noticed that I'm going to do something. Uh, I'm going to disrupt Vassar's program because of the uh, the interaction between the uh, the initial program and the one that's in operation now, and mm -hmm. so I quickly try to circumvent that error, uh, so I can draw on first do no harm. Sure, I'll let it happen. And I will re-roll those two dice. Okay. Do y'all hear me now? We do. Yes. All right. I just switch headsets. <laughs> also, yeah, we are at uh, three momentum at the moment there. I believe Zero can assist in this role as well. Yes. And now that Zero is here and able to hear us, Zero, if you can get it a success here, it's an insight and in engineering. Okay. No pressure, of course. No pressure. Insight engineering. Um, no, no power systems. <laughs> Ex experimental medicine or cybernetics? Actually, yeah, I would give you one of those. For once, I'm not going to try to use power systems, okay? Branching <laughs> out, I know, it's a scary thing. Uh... Is it assist with 1d20 or is it a... Two... Assist with one, yeah. Okay. Um... Can't do that as an assist, so... Hey, there you go. There's four successes. So, good news. You are able to find a bit of code that is irregular. Now... When I say irregular, and I'm trying to put this in a way that non-science, computer science majors would understand. Let's say, for example, and let me try and break it down. And if I lose someone, I'll try to dumb it down even further. Um, let's say, for example, that there's two ways of doing a loop in a program. There's the for loop, which has a condition that it checks. And if it meets the condition, it runs the for loop. Then there's the while loop. Uh, option where while will run as long as the condition is true. Very similar, but very different things. Am I losing anyone so far? I'm going to take that silence as a no. So, uh, there's subtle differences between a for loop and a while loop. What you're seeing is that where there should be a series of for loops or a series of conditional run times, you're seeing something more like a while loop, but the while loop is always set to true, so it will always run. Well, Lieutenant, it seems as if someone or something has altered some of the fundamental uh, coding of your program. Uh, I'm really at a loss to explain the origin of this disorder. Uh, Lieutenant Zero, do you have any suggestions? This seems to be more in your area of expertise than mine. Well, the issue is, is with the uh, loop programming that is currently in place in the system, in his programming, if we were to adjust it to try to cure him there's a possibility that it may cause other code to break down the way um the easiest way to do this would be to sit down with a team of hollow experts and turn his program offline and probably give them about a month to go over everything is there any indication, and I'm asking this out of out of character, is there any indication as to the specific subroutines of his program that have been so affected? For instance, do they cover um, his knowledge of temporal mechanics or his motor functions or the like? What are the programs that have been influenced responsible for? 
I have to say this carefully because I don't want to reveal. How are we at 600 people? Okay, hi, 600 people. Hi. I don't know how we're at that high. <laughs> I don't get 600 people normally, so this is very exciting for me. Uh, no pressure. No pressure. Okay. Um, let's say, for example, let's say this. Uh, his motor functions are being impaired. His sensor operations, like his quote-unquote sight, is impaired. His sinuses, such as they are, again, a sensor, uh, is impaired. Um, if anything, it looks like, and I'll give this to you if you give me a point of momentum. Um, it almost looks like, uh, you remember that one episode of Voyager where the doctor gave himself a virus? And then basically Tom came in and modified said virus so that it actually lasted longer than expected? It's something like that, where it's almost like someone has deliberately introduced a virus to Visar. But not like a computer virus, though mm. I guess still a computer virus, but actually like a, a biological bi virus. Well, Lieutenant Commander, viewing as there may be a possibility that this may be a imitation of a biological virus... We could either get in touch with Lieutenant Junior Grade Jensen, who is well versed in self diagnosis, right. or we could get with <laughs> Lieutenant Allel, who <laughs> may be able to assist us with um, finding a cure, Wait, for lack you, of a better term. Did you just say that it resembles an, a biological virus? Miss Archer was just telling me about one such virus that was being created uh, photonically by Lieutenant Jensen. <laughs> um, Zero will try to pull up the uh, specifications of Jensen's virus. Okay. As you're doing that, Mr. Zero, Mr. Lee like you to roll me a fitness and medicine please difficulty of two just great work jensen hey go big go home fitness security fitness medicine oh medicine would my infectious diseases focus apply here <laughs> yes for you it would <clears throat> would experimental medicine apply for me uh, I'll let experimental medicine apply, sure. <laughs> also, in case anyone is worried that coughing is in character, Dag is not just dying on us. All right, so I have good news and I have bad news, as I seem to be saying quite a lot tonight. Uh, Zero, you're fine. You feel perfectly operational. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Lee, uh, not so much. You suddenly feel as if you are coming down with, uh, some form of a flu, you know, runny nose, a bit of a stiffle, you know, some, something, something's going on. Oh, I need a drink. Um, <laughs> I will tap Sorry. my comm badge. Uh, and so, uh, Lieutenant... Jensen, would you please report to the science lab? Uh, on my way, Commander. Okay. Uh, gentlemen, once he enters this room, I suggest we lock it down and uh, implement a quarantine. You want to quarantine if... me? Uh, no, Lieutenant Commander, I want to quarantine myself and Ensign Jensen. I'm... Uh, oh not feeling particularly well and I'd, uh, well well better should we not story. should we not also bring in miss archer she is exposed to say the least yes that might be for the best um <clears throat> you seem physiology uh, is remarkably resilient i doubt she would be infected uh, there would be doubt that you should become infected as well. Yet, yeah. here we are. Yes. <laughs> this is a first for something sciencey. <coughs> well put, Lieutenant Commander. Um, Lieutenant Zero to Lieutenant Alo. 
This is a little, I'll come in. Uh, be advised, Science Lab 3 may be placed under a quarantine notice here in a minute. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Vassar, Lieutenant Commander Lee Tobin, and Lieutenant Junior Grade Jensen have both, have all uh, begun showing symptoms of a unknown disease. Um, at this time, I do not have any symptoms that they have. Um, any medical advice would be appreciated. Um, did you say Vassar? Is there an issue with my vocal processors? There might be an issue with my ears or my brain either. Um, did you say Vassar? Yes, Lieutenant. Lieutenant Commander Vassar is currently He's showing... Si what? Uh, similar to the studies done on the doctor in Voyager um, where he infected himself and then a, another person came in and adjusted the virus uh something similar may be occurring with lieutenant commander Vassar. so at that point lee would just tap his comm badge to lieutenant l uh lieutenant uh this is lieutenant commander lee uh there is precedent for this sort of thing you may wish to investigate poly water intoxication on board the enterprise uh lieutenant commander data was infected by a uh, a kind of virus that also influenced the biological members of the crew. <clears throat> Just for the record. Right. Um, so, Zero, I'm going to ask you to stay there with them. Hey, Firm, I'll Even do everything I can. Even if you're not showing symptoms, you could be spreading a it. A carrier. Yes. All right. Um, initiate quarantine. I'll let the CMO know. And um, I'll touch base in a bit. It seems that Lieutenant Commander Vassar has a statement to make with his hand raised. Oh, I can't I'm see that, but okay. To, it's too bright in here. Can we lower the illumination, please? Computer, lower illumination to 20%. It does. And I'm going to say, for flavor's sake, uh, I just want to really push a new button that I have. Uh, a medical alert goes across the entire ship, which hopefully the stream is now hearing. Uh, mm -hmm. But as general quarters is sounded, uh, I think that is a perfect opportunity. We're going to take break in a moment, but we're going to cut back very quickly to the runabout where... Uh, let's do. A, let's actually go back to the title card for this one. Because I think it shows space better than the uh, regular map does. So uh, let me draw on this map real quick to sort of highlight where you are in relation to the Fenrir. Um, so let's say that the runabout is this red circle over here near the moons. Um, so you probably aren't even visible from the Fenrir. Like you are tiny as all hell. Mm -hmm. um, but Mr. Rast... As you cycle through the airlock and the door opens, um, I have to ask, has Rast been on very many EVA operations before? No. No. In that case, I need you to roll me a, let's call it a fitness and a medicine. Uh, I'm only going to make it a difficulty one. Okay. Damn it. There it is. Okay. And if you have survival or composure, uh, that would apply here. Uh, yeah, no. And now we're at 600 people because apparently, why not? Hi, people. Hi. You know what? I'll spend one of the momentum. <laughs> All right. I think you're at, uh, I think you're at one momentum right now after that spend. Okay. All right, you get the one success. So Rast, as the empty void of space opens up before you, you have a momentary sense of vertigo as you almost feel like you're about to fall out into the void. But you, you catch yourself in time. You, you steal yourself, remind yourself, hey, I'm clamped to the deck right now with mag boots. It's fine. Everything's okay here. Um, now my question is... How are you proceeding out of the airlock? Are you going to be sort of stepping out onto the hull of the runabout? 
Are you going out with a tether? Like, how are you maneuvering your way He's out? He's going to... to have a tether and uh, mag boots. Okay. Basically to walk along the outside. Okay. So there's that vertigo sensation again as you sort of maneuver your way to the exterior of the hull and then bring your sort of rotate 90 degrees and bring your feet to touch the exterior. And as soon as it connects and you feel the seal, you basically stand up uh, perpendicular or no parallel with the runabout's floor. Uh, a little bit unnerving. Again, you handle it just fine. Um, but as you're walking, I want you to give me another, let's call this a fitness and security this time, a uh, difficulty of two. Uh, what about, uh, hand to hand combat? Unfortunately, you're not really fighting anyone <laughs> out balance here. Balance and so... stuff like that. Fighting my fears. Um, yeah, we'll use the last one of our momentum. Okay. Because I haven't even gotten to the repair yet. Mm -mm. All right, two successes. So, uh, again, you are able to catch yourself as your left boot doesn't quite click when you go to put your weight on it. So there's that moment of when you're falling forward, but then the boot kicks in and it solidifies yourself on the hull of the runabout. Okay. And yeah, I think uh, without needing any further rolling, you arrive at the external power coupling uh, where you need to make the repair. Uh, it's very simple to get to. You literally just sort of slide up. You know, after doing undoing a few safety bolts, you slide up a panel and there is a junction box that is more or less sitting there available to you to work with. Um, but I have to ask an important question. Um, do you have any engineering focuses? Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> Let's see, why don't you roll me a reason in engineering difficulty of two to see if you can even figure out what you need to route here? Okay. Reason engineering. And I'm going to let this succeed at cost because I don't want you to get stuck here. But you probably want to succeed because otherwise I get threat. All right. So I do, get, I do get some threat. Uh, yeah. I mean, you, you think back to your training back at the academy and you think, oh, yeah, it's uh, the red box there, that red, red tubule. And you start to work on it. And back on the, sh on the interior of the runabout... Uh, Commodore Archuleta, I'd yeah. like you to roll me a Insight Engineering, please. These two engineering powerhouses that we have on this shuttle right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you guys got this. Evasive action? I'm kidding. Unfortunately, no. We have yeah. 666 viewers. Okay. That is impressive. That <laughs> Cool. Uh, focus. Okay. So, uh, Archuleta, what you realize, because again, succeed at cost, I'll get some threat. Uh, what you realize is two things. Uh, first is that the act of cycling the airlock has cut out about 20 minutes of breathable time, which probably implies there's a fault with the airlock. The other thing that you notice is that spending some threat... You know that tether that Rast, you know, connected to himself and let outside? that's securely connected, yeah. Let's just say you look out the window of the runabout, <laughs> oh, the no. front view screen, and you see the other end just sort of floating by. Oh, my God. And that's where we're going to take our break. <laughs> so uh, we will be back in 10 minutes, everybody. Stick around.
yes. didn't work. <laughs> All right, and welcome back, everybody, to uh, the second half of Season 3, Episode 1, where apparently many things are going wrong. Uh, specifically, though, we're going to focus on what's going wrong in sickbay at this current moment. So, Alel, you, of course, mm -hmm. received a call that, uh, you know, there's some sort of an outbreak occurring. You know, you maybe sit down, start to review the data that has been sent to you. You start to, like, run it against the computer. When, you know, there's start to be a small trickle of people coming in. Now, the orderlies and other nurses are handling them, doing triage, you know, treating them as they're, you know, coming in. But then there starts to be a deluge of people coming in. And soon sickbay is standing room only. Like, you have so many people sick that there is just not enough beds or not enough space for everybody. Okay. Um, who would... Is okay, so Zero is in the science lab. Who's on like holodeck duty? Uh, I don't think we have anyone on holodeck duty. Okay, um, she taps her badge, computer convert holodeck one into a triage unit, please. The computer chimes, and uh, sure enough, there is a holographic triage unit waiting for you. Excellent. Um, nurses, medical officers, please escort these uh, fine people to Holodeck 1 nearby. We will take care of them shortly. Make sure you log their symptoms and report back to me. It's too crowded in here. All right. Alel, I'd like you to roll me a fitness medicine, please. Difficulty of two. And uh, I think you've got to focus for this one. I just, I have a hunch. Um, forensic science? No, unfortunately not. Emergency medicine? Biochemistry? I can give you emergency medicine. But remember, you are activating her, so you can't give her a new focus if you so chose. Okay. Think about it. All right. You actually get a point of momentum. You feel fine. So, good news. Uh, but now that you've had time to deal with the rush coming in the sick bay, mm -hmm. um, you finally get a chime at the uh, computer program you had running, and you look, and what you see is very strange. And I'm going to give you access to a handout in Roll20. Okay. Okay. Uh, you should see it under the player reports folder. Now, what you do with that information, I leave to you. And while she's reading, okay. welcome back, 620 people. Hi. It went down for a minute, but... Okay. Um, computer, what is the power status to Holodeck 1 in the science lab where Vassar is. I'm going to spend two threat because the computer starts to say power is nominal. Power is draining. Estimated time to full collapse of power approximately 16 hours. Um, She's going to try and get a hold of the captain. Which would be Williams right now. L. Alda Williams. Go ahead, Lieutenant. Where are you? I'm on the bridge. Okay. Stay there and don't panic, but we have a situation. <laughs> I've been getting some sporadic reports of system failures and a pathogen. Something like that. Um, it's, I've been running some tests. And I don't know how it got on board, but this is a holographic pathogen. And 
if if the patients are removed from anywhere that has hollow emitters, they might instantly die. I said, don't panic. How are you feeling? Are you sitting down? I'm fine, Lieutenant. Okay. I'm fine too. Um, Williams. So, yeah. <laughs> fitness medicine, please. Difficulty of two. Fitness medicine. Medicine. Um, let's see. I'm going to try to. Nah, none of those. None of those folks will supply. You get the two, You feel fine. Carry on. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> all right, Lieutenant. Let's take a breath and do the right thing. <laughs> I, I, I. Um, do you have any? complaints about my performance no i think you think you misunderstood me we need to we need to move fast but we need to make sure that we're acting on all information right right so the problem is this is not 100 percent medical i will need help i need help <laughs> because this is a hollow virus like i said i need engineering help All right. Well, engineering is going to have its work cut out for it. I think um, I'll loop zero in on the conversation. Uh, Williams to zero. Zero here. How can I help you, Commander? Um, Lieutenant, I've got Lieutenant LL online with us. Uh, Lieutenant LL, can you advise Mr. Zero what it is that you need? This is, after running some tests, I've determined this is a hollow virus. Essentially, it's some kind of holographic override of your, maybe not yours, but the hosts, the patient's cellular structure. It's as though they're, those cells are being eaten and replaced with holographic ones. So you have, I need your help ensuring two things, that power does not fail to the hollow emitter system. If so, I cannot guarantee the safety of those who have already been infected. And um, I need to devise obviously a cure for this, um, some, some kind of inoculation, uh, some kind of white cell to go in and combat the hollow pathogen. And I am versed in organic medicine, so I'm hoping you can assist me. Well, Lieutenant Commander Vassar is here with me. Um, I'm sure that myself, him, and Lieutenant Commander Lee, who I believe should be considered the first two patients of this new disease, um, we should be able to figure something out with your help, Lieutenant. All right, I will get to work on how we're going to combat this. And um, I'll leave an open line to, so we can share information. Uh, question for out of character. Would Zero have also received the notification that power was declining? You would have, yes. OK. Um, Commander Williams, would it be possible with the current uh, failing and the current unknown of the power systems on the ship to also prevent any sort of catastrophic failures in the instance that this disease mutates, for lack of a better term? Is there a way that we could possibly start see trying to send um, uninfected crew members to a quarantined zone on Ryza itself? I'm assuming they would have the medical facilities in order to help facilitate something. 
It's entirely possible, Lieutenant, but we may have a solution that's closer to home. If we can get out ahead of this fast enough and determine who on the crew are infected and who are not, we could move all those individuals unaffected to another section of the ship and essentially use Alpha section as a triage. We can separate it from the rest of the ship and on Gamma and Beta sections, we can simply shut down the hollow grid and that should eliminate the threat of the virus. Would you agree? It is a possibility to do that. However, by answering MVAM, we then have to worry about the reactors per section if Alpha sections reactors decide that they want to suddenly go out. We now have less time than if the ship was still together. Speaking of time, checking on our friend doing a certain spacewalk right now. So, uh, Mr. Rast, you've got Yay. the panel out. You've uh, identified uh, what you need to finagle with. And uh, my question is going to sound like a slap in the face, but I have to ask it. Tools did you bring with you? Uh, just the standard kit. Standard kit. All right. We'll say that it includes uh, wire cutters. A, uh, I forget what it's actually called in Trek spanner. terms. Don't forget your hydro spanner. Uh, the spanner, of course. Um, but no, the uh, like the auto welder or the auto like uh, soldering iron. Uh, I forget what it's actually called in Trek, but. Either way, you have basic tools. So that's what I was wondering. Um, so. As long as I have some self sealing stem bolts. I'm yes, fine. you definitely have self sealing stem bolts. Um, what I would say is that there's two ways we can approach this. I'm going to let you decide which we do. Um, the first is we do a high difficulty but singular roll. And the benefit to doing that is that. Obviously, it's a singular roll. You pass or fail. We move on. Uh, option two is perhaps easier for you based on your engineering score of one. Um, it would be an extended task, and the difficulty would be much lower. But it would be an extended task, which would still be difficult in its own way. So which would you prefer to do? Let's go with the single roll. The single roll. I love it. So this is going to be a daring engineering. The difficulty is going to be a four. And I'm spending threat not to increase the difficulty, but to increase the complication range. So if you roll a 17 to 20, that will be a complication. Oh, boy. All right. So uh, he's going to. Well, Captain, um, this is not going to be easy, uh, but I, I will do my best. Luck. Any, uh, any, any last, <laughs> any last words? So, does he know the tether is not connected? No. No. Good luck. <laughs> It's right, a good so, thing you didn't tell him because I would have made that a complication for him. <laughs> so if I roll, if I use determination, mm -hmm. um, what do I have to spend to get a third die? Uh, so if you spend your determination, that counts as the third die. So your next die would be the fourth die, uh, mm -hmm. which means it would be two momentum, or in your case, it looks like a momentum and a threat. And if you congratulations, want... you have a threat, and we have no more moments. <laughs> All right, now do you want to give me a further three threat so that you're rolling four dice? Uh, what do you think? Uh, I'll let the captain make the decision. What's the choice again? Giving him, want, giving me three. Do we threat. want to give him more threat so I can get four dice? <sighs> <laughs> Sure. Okay. You heard the captain. Oh. The Commodore. The Commodore. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> All right. So uh, Rast is out there. He's he's sweating. He's spending determination because you know he is a big fan of living. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to see how this uh, how this roll goes. No pressure. Oh, wow. yeah. That is, uh, okay, that's a 12, so that's not a complication. So that's a grand total of six successes, which means you're now at two momentum. Very nice. So Rast, you know, maybe a, a sudden moment of inspiration comes to you. You remember back at the academy, a uh, old professor, Johnson, really hounded you for your uh, applied engineering class. And, you know, something he said resonates with you. Something that I'm going to let you decide what it is, but... It brings you strength. It brings you quality of mind. And not only are you able to reroute power through the external coupling as was desired, but you also notice without any fault of your own or any detriment that uh, your tether is not really connected right now. So he remembered a mnemonic device that the uh, teacher taught him. So, uh, you know, uh, blue, yellow, you know, so he was able to... Uh, able to figure out the order in the uh, the wires to reroute and then connecting red to green, you know, that kind of thing. It's one of those like yellow and blue make green mm -hmm. type situation. So you need to get the yellow wire and the blue wire and that equals a good thing. So it's green. So uh, I, 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 I think we're, I think we're good. Can you uh, see if uh, power is routed? Sure. And yeah, Commodore, you look at your screens, your readouts, and uh, yeah, you have two options. You can either uh, send that power to the engines and get going towards the Fenrir, or you can send that power to communications and chirp back to the Fenrir. I want to send... So if I divert the power to the engines, we can we have control. Correct. Okay. I want to do that. Alrighty. And Rast is going to slowly make his way back into the ship. Because I like dramatic tension, fitness security, I have threat, difficulty of three. <laughs> fitness security. I'm going to spend one of those momentum there. Okay. Fitness security. And difficulty is what? Difficulty is three. Oh, damn. That sucks. Oh! Look at that. You get your three. You're back inside, no problem. He's just... He's sweating, taking off the suit. I love it. And uh, he is as... definitely He is definitely shaken as he, uh, as he comes out of the airlock. Um... Are you okay? Oh. Uh, every, everything works, right? You know, this whole emotion sensing thing is really unfair and only goes one way. So why don't you answer my question? Oh, that was uh, a very trying experience. We're getting there. And uh, let's, you know, once I, once I noticed the tether was gone and, uh, uh, yeah, but uh, uh, do you feel do you feel comfortable piloting the shuttle, or would you like me to? Um, I can take it from here, XO. Oh, thank you. <laughs> he just takes us. He just plops down in uh, one of the other seats <laughs> and uh, lets out a big sigh. Uh, he is definitely. Uh, doesn't take an empath to realize that he is very stressed out. Very nice. All right. And we're now going to cut to the science lab where uh, at this point there's a miniature party going on inside. You've got Jensen, you've got oh Lee God. Tobin, you've got Vassar, you've got Zero. Uh, Miss Archer is there as soon as I find her token. Archer's over here. And uh, at this point, uh, Mr. Zero and Mr. Jensen, I'd like you to roll me a uh, fitness medicine, please, at uh, difficulty of three. Um... 
Jensen, if you don't take the momentum, I'll give him a threat. All right. Sounds good. And also, this is technically activating Jensen, so you can give him a new focus if you so wished. Even a value. If you wanted to give him a value, you could give him a value. Um... Um, I kind of want to give him like a like a like a comedy value, but I, I really don't want to hamstring the character. So, um, I am going to give him a focus in biogenics. Okay, I think that's fitting. Uh, yeah, and would that focus apply to this? Check? It would. Um, you said experimental medicine yeah. would work for me or cybernetics, right? It would. Okay. All right. Unfortunately, no six, not enough successes. Only one for Jensen and two for Mr. Zero. So what this means is that Zero, you're now experiencing the same thing that Mr. Lee is. Jensen, you think this might be it. Oh. Oh, no. It's happening. Just like I always knew it would. Now, Jensen, you're going to be all right. Oh, God, I'm going to die in space. No, technically you'd be dying inside of a starship, which is just in space, but... Uh, okay. Oh, my eyes are itching. Just remember, Jensen, you are the Jensen. Right? The the prophets spoke to you directly. You can't possibly die here. Um Commander Lee, I appreciate I appreciate you trying to make me feel better, but I've spoken to the counselor and I, I know that your faith means a lot to you, so please don't feel don't don't feel like you have to blaspheme just to just to assuage me. That's actually very considerate of you, uh, Lieutenant. Thank you. He's going to turn over to the uh, panels next to him and try to call up a, a schematic of the virus insofar as has been determined by uh, Alel. Mm -hmm. uh, Ensign, I believe, uh, forgive me, Lieutenant, although if it's what right, I suspect I'm, I'm is true, you year. may be demoted. Is this the virus that you attempted to create on the holodeck? Does it bear any similarity to it? Yep. Jensen, I'm going to make this a really easy roll for you. Insight okay. Medicine, difficulty of zero. Oh, nice. Insight Medicine, difficulty zero. All right, that's two momentum. Yeah, this is your disease. Oh. Yes, this is subatomic encephalomalacia. Excuse you. Thank you. That's not a very accurate name for it, but I suppose it will do. Um, do you still have access to the data banks surrounding its construction, the program that you created? I can take you through it step by step. And I wonder if it would be possible for us to make modifications to the virus's force field encapsulation, making it susceptible to our own immune systems. Could we reprogram it so that, well, we wouldn't even have to find a cure. Our own immune systems could fight it off. That's, that's ingenious, Commander. I'd never considered that. I, I think it may be possible. That would be sufficient for the crew. However, I am not programmed with an immune system. Could we not create a immune system? For Vassar? It might be possible to emulate the functions of an immune system by creating a series of subroutines designed to root out the affected code inside of his program, borrowing from well, the operations of our own of our own systems. And if you'll excuse me, I, I need to go over to the corner and throw up. And Lee um, excuses himself to the corner where he does promptly. That's a um that's an early first stage um, response to the virus. Um, Flu-like symptoms. Jensen, uh, roll me a challenge die. Oh dear. <laughs> so 
So, you know, Jensen, you know that philosophy that monkey see, monkey do when you see someone throw up? Oh, uh, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Zero will take a hypo spray Excuse and me. he'll just, Jensen, go into the corner and here. He'll hit him with it. He'll hit Jensen with the hypo spray. Uh, that should make you feel better. It's relieved other people's symptoms. Um, Zero will then turn around and mouth to everybody else, sugar water. <laughs> oh, hi. That's, uh... Yes, I can... I am I now the... quite grateful that my creators did not endow me with a digestive tract. <laughs> but we may... The, the, the immune system subroutine for Vasara is intriguing, but I don't know if we have the time. Um, and GM, can I run a quick diagnostic of the stability of Vasara's hollow matrix? Uh, mm -hmm. Because if the virus is having the effect on Vasara that it's having on anybody else, his mm -hmm. program may be starting to degrade. It's a reasonable line of thinking. Yeah. Go ahead and roll me a insight engineering. Uh, let's make this a difficulty of two. Uh, I'm going to spend one of those momentum. Okay. All right. Hey, there's the two successes you need. Yeah. Uh, the spray ain't doing too hot. He's maybe got, I mean, if this is your disease, He's maybe got another 36 hours, if that. We can somehow cure the ailment in ourselves and program an immune system in the Vassar within 36 hours, assuming that that idea is successful. We, we can stabilize this program, but it's degrading just as our physical bodies are. And if that Whoa. wasn't bad enough, I'm going to push this button because I want to push this button. Red alert begins sounding as uh, a computer warning blares. Emergency. Power reactors are failing. Estimated time to total system collapse. Three hours. Lieutenant Zero to Zeke. Are you there, Dag? Yes. Zeke, you copy? Yeah, this is Zeke. What can I do for you? Um, what's going on with the reactors? Why did we just receive a notification for three hours? Uh, let me dive into that. Hold on. And right. Zeke will do a quick system check. Yeah, a uh, reason engineering from Zeke. Difficulty of one. And we'll get to you in a moment, Alal, because there's something you got you coming any down momentum? the way. Oh. Uh, you have one momentum. Do you guys mind if Zeke purloins that momentum for a dice? Yeah, for it, man. And uh, can I get a uh, focus in Cerberus class? Yeah, most definitely. And go. Nice. So that is uh, two momentum for you. So, good news. I'm doing that a lot today. Good news is that this is actually uh, a design flaw of the Cerberus class in that um, when the power reactors are being cycled, um, as you might do at Stardock, because there are essentially triplicate of every reactor, because you have three sections of the ship that need three different reactors. It's actually not a problem. As long as you don't separate the ship, the other reactors will automatically take over. This is one of those, like, and I'm going to date myself here. If you remember Windows ME, how buggy that was, it is Windows ME levels of buggy. So you don't actually have three hours. You're fine. But it's one of those things where no one's patched the problem yet. Um, do 
does zero Alel and Williams all still have the open line? I imagine you probably do. Okay. Um, I guess Zeke t would have told the, I guess as Zeke would have told them that they, they would have heard that as well. Yeah, let's go with that. Well, um, so much for this is Alel. Are you, can you guys hear me? We've been able to hear you this entire time, Lieutenant. Okay. 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 Cool. Um, do you are you all familiar with Andorian ice worms? Is that a drink? No. Okay. Probably not. So their excrement is extremely biogenetically malleable. Um, they're actually banned, but I have some in my possession. Don't ask me how I got it, but. Um, this i may be able to basically what i'm saying is um code this hollow program at the cellular cellular level into the growth chambers agar and then apply some of their excrement to that and i may be able to create an inoculation for the organic patients now i'm not saying i have an answer for zeke not zeke Bizarre, <laughs> but this might work. Archer Do just not speaks for... up in the background. I'm sorry. Is she literally suggesting to use shit to fix our problems? <laughs> We've used shit before. I don't even want to know. Well, for Lieutenant Commander Vassar's sake, seeing as I do have a physical body, I would be willing to accept any experiments to be done on me before they are performed on Vassar. Um, this is not for inorganic, excuse me, um, patients. This is primarily for all of the people in the holodeck one who are suffering. <laughs> but you may be able to apply the hollow code to Vassar's subroutines if it works could we not seeing as this is a uh, photonic based uh, virus is there not a way to make this excrement photonic as well holographic poop because of the nature of the material it is extremely adaptable between both bio and technological if I'm making sense it may work. Well, let's put one foot in front of the other, Lieutenant. Alel, please, uh, I guess, do the uh, do the worm feces thing. I'm on it, uh, sir. Have my, have my full <laughs> authorization. But... Thank you. And remember, these are banned, so. Um, you know, I'm gonna, I think, extraordinary times call for extraordinary measures. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to get, so I'm just saying. You have my full sign off. You know, 20 years ago, Romulan Ale was banned and everybody had it. Speaking of extraordinary circumstances, get a hail, Commander Williams. It's coming from a runabout containing, containing Commander Rast and Commodore Archuleta. They're asking to dock. <laughs> Can you put them on screen, please? Sure enough, uh, showing up on the view screen of the bridge, which I don't have handy, so you'll just have to ad-lib for a moment. But uh, yeah, appearing on the view screen is none other than the captain and uh, the Commodore. Commodore. Uh, Commander Rast. How was Ryza? We went to Ryza? I feel like I I've been in space just my whole life. I'm sensing you're a little stressed, Commander. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's an understatement, Commander. What's going on? Uh, we've got a quarantine situation uh, aboard the Fenrir. I'm afraid that your docking permission for your own safety is denied. Okay. Keep me appraised. Will do. 
Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to tie you into the open comms channel that we have, and uh, by all means, any suggestions would be welcome. Um, we're going to try worm poop first. <laughs> Um. Uh, <laughs> you broke. You broke. Rast, Rodney. Good job. Rast, Wait, uh, <laughs> Rast mutes the comm for a second and looks at uh, Commodore. Uh, he is actually not joking about the worm poop. <laughs> and then he takes it off a of mute. How do you know? <laughs> um. Oh, because you're empathic. Um. <laughs> Um, um, when was and the last the time you had any, sl any sleep, RJ? And we see red alert just blaring behind Williams <laughs> on the view screen. No, I think sleep will come when all this is over. I'm, I'm hopeful that we've got a workable solution, but. And there's a uh, rat's head poking over the tactical station. Yeah, let's get that out of here. For the time being. <clears throat> um. For the time being, the runabout is the safest place for you. Would you believe me if I told you that I, we just got this thing running again after being stranded out here for hours? <laughs> uh, you know, right now I'll believe just about anything. So maybe when you guys get back, uh, maybe grab some drinks and six aft tell me all about it uh but all right for right now uh i've got to try to deal with this but hey open comm line you guys are on it any suggest by all, all right. means i'm open sounds good good luck we'll be listening all right william's out all right now since we're literally between like four different set pieces of the moment how are we at 700 people how how hi <sighs> Um, okay, guys. okay, uh, focus. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's pressure GMing in front of 700 people. Who knew? Uh, where was I? Yes, so because we are between multiple set pieces, uh, we're just going to theater of the mind this. Um, I'm going to offer the same deal I did to Rast earlier to all of you. We can either turn this into a single very high difficulty roll, or we can do a extended task which will be less difficult but more time consuming i vote so for extended task yeah okay <laughs> i figured you because... might. all right what? so uh let me type this out as i say it so the work track is going to be 14. the magnitude will be a four the difficulty will also start at a four. Uh, there will be some resistance. Uh, there will be two resistance on this. And the default task will be, oh, excuse me, uh, will be either daring uh, plus engineering or daring plus medicine. And if I can spell medicine properly, that's what you're working with. And I would say that you have the option of getting two assists. And that assist can come from either Alel, could come from Zero, could come from Lee, could come from Jensen. It could also come from the ship, but you only get two assists. In, just a, a question out of game, in mm -hmm. a um, an extended task, does... Um... What was it? Uh, testing a theory and uh, theory into practice apply to successive roles in that task? It would, yes. Okay, I do have a, a daring of 10 and an engineering of 5 with an applicable focus of infectious diseases. Sounds like a you job. Mm -hmm. Now the question is, who's assisting you? So you've got the medicine part. Do we need an engineering part? I've got the engineering, so maybe a level oh. on medicine. Okay. Is that okay? Because she's supporting? Yeah. Okay. All right, so that's one support or one assist. Who's the other assist? Um, I have the... Um, I have a talent called crisis management mm -hmm. uh, that allows me to use the direct task as if I was the, you know, the actual captain. Right. 
Um, and being a security officer, I can sub out command for security on that mm -hmm. assist. If that's yeah, if that's and if I if that works that way, you would be doing a present security for Williams. Yeah, pretty much. All right, let's do it that way. So Lee, you're doing a daring engineering. Uh, Alel is doing a daring medicine. And Commander Williams, you are doing a presence security. And again, your starting difficulty is a four. Xenovirology. I'll give it to you. Uh, team dynamics. We'll give it to you, most definitely. All right, there's one from Alel. There's one from Williams. I'll buy an extra die using momentum. Okay. Clickable focus. And that is a total of five Ooh. successes with Lee's roll, so you get the momentum right back. So now, Lee, I need you to roll me uh, two plus your engineering, so seven challenge dice, please. All right. Would you like to spend momentum to re-roll zeros, et cetera, et cetera? I am going to spend that uh, momentum I just got to re-roll uh, four of those zeros. Okay. All right, you're now at a total of seven, and with a resistance of two, you still achieve five work, which is a breakthrough. So do you want to keep your result, or do you want to maybe get rid of some resistance with that last momentum so that you have more on the work track? I think I'll keep that momentum for the next time, if that's all right with everyone, or what, what do you guys think? I think that's pretty good for the yeah, next one. Your preference. All righty. So, uh, good news. You are making uh, good success here, or good progress. And actually, Lee, while you're working with everyone, you just sort of look over at Archer for a moment and think, you know, maybe she's involved in this some way. And you start to get an idea. You know, maybe, maybe if you apply what you know about 8472 biology... Maybe you could arrive at a solution quicker. So it's same setup. So everybody doing the same roles. And let's see what happens. Uh, so based on that information, I would attempt to emulate the Species 8472's sort of rapacious cellular structure. Uh, so using that in conjunction with the excrement idea, we'll see if we can create some kind of antibody that will be... Uh, more virulent in its assault against the uh, uh, the virus. Mm -hmm. um, with respect to the role, I have mm -hmm. testing a theory which lowers the difficulty by one. Okay. So is it a difficulty two now? Difficulty two. And I get an extra die from the uh, theory into practice. Theory into practice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So three dice engineering with an applicable focus. All right, well, there's uh, three successes already, so you get one momentum. Uh, Williams, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you can only use the direct task once, correct? Correct. Okay, so you can't assist anymore. Alel, I'm assuming you're still assisting, so do your daring medicine. Uh, who's your second assist going to be, Lee? I think that uh, it would probably be zero. Okay, so zero, daring engineering from you. We're sitting at uh, five successes right now. Very nice. Wow, another two. So you're at seven successes, which means you get a grand total of five moment. You're capped on momentum. Good job. Uh, so yeah, another uh, seven challenge dice, please. I tell you what, you give me all your momentum, you complete the extended task. Uh, question. Yes. My talents don't affect mm, his roles, right? Not okay. his roles, unfortunately. Okay. So no miracle worker, but he has enough work here after resistance that if he spends the momentum to reduce resistance and do additional work, he can basically complete this in two goes. I would be more than willing to do that if everyone agrees. Sure, show. Done. All righty. So uh, I'm going to turn off red alert here because sure enough, the uh, 
shall we say, the poop idea, uh, has turned out some merit when com or when combined with the species 8472's unique biology. And, uh, you know, not to, you know, hamper role play, but, you know, I do want to speed us along just a little bit. Uh, you know, you test it out. Works fine. Uh, though patients are recovering. The biologic patients, anyway. You still have the matter of Vassar, and you have the matter of Zero. And there's also one other thing, Lee, as part of all this. The more you look at scans of Archer... An idea occurs to you. You look at Jensen. You look at Archer. It stands to reason that maybe, just maybe, when Jensen made his hollow virus, it actually attacked Archer. And Archer is actually the first patient, if that makes any sense. Like, she is a carrier. Hmm. Could I run a medical scan on her? Sure. That would be a uh, reason medicine difficulty of one. And I will use augmented ability reason on that. All right. All right. You get a momentum back. Yeah, that your idea is confirmed. I know it was a fed idea from the GM, but the idea is confirmed. <laughs> um, Ambassador, I believe that uh, you have been infected. In fact, you might be patient zero of this virus that we've just encountered. Archer looks at you, looks at Jensen, looks at you, looks at Jensen. Anyone have any problems if I strangle Jensen here? Yes, you won't Jensen let me raises, do it. Jensen raises his hand. <laughs> you don't count, do Jensen. I, well, I mean, with, in, with, with all due respect, Ambassador, I did program it to not attack. No. No, no, you, you couldn't. Yeah. You couldn't just not, make a virus that turns your skin green. No, you had to make a bioweapon. Would it suffice if he was simply demoted? You know what? I have a better idea. Computer, and she counts how many people in the room. Eight dodgeballs. Green. Full inflation. Everybody gets a green dodgeball. Oh, you wouldn't. That's fun. Not the, not the dodgeballs. Perhaps our time can be better spent ensuring my program doesn't shut down in yep. 29 hours. We've got to help. We've got to help Vassar. We, let's just table the dodgeballs until we help Vassar. Well, hold on. Ar you know, Archer sort of thinks for a moment. If I'm patient zero, and that means I gave it to Vassar, doesn't that mean you could use my immune system in hollow form to fix him? It would certainly be worth an attempt, Ambassador. All right, Jensen. She puts her dodgeball down. Make it work. Otherwise, you're getting three of these. Um, I need a tricorder. And sure enough, because, you know, we are sort of running up on our usual stop time. It's easy enough that programming a way to recover Vassar, a way to recover Zero, you've done the hard part. It's just a matter of adapting a hollow program to an immune system as you came up with earlier. And end of the day, Jensen probably gets dodgeballed a few times. Uh, but before we turn out for today's session, I actually wanted to cut back to our title card for a moment. Because, uh, as you all are sort of dealing with your own problems on the ship, I'd like to draw your attention to this moon over here. Uh, this moon uh, off to the left. And you're looking at it, or if anyone's looking at it out of the window, 
Just for a moment, a very, very brief moment, it turns fluorescent pink, but then back to normal. And with that mystery in everybody's head, that's where we'll end the session. So yeah, thank you everybody for uh, a good session. Uh, I want to say a few things before we sign off. Uh, most of that adventure came from Mr. Dag and Miss Watney. That was sort of their brainchild. So kudos to them. Hopefully they enjoyed uh, my twist on their adventure. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also want to say a huge thanks to everyone who turned out tonight. I literally have never had more than 300 viewers before. So seeing 700s, like, wow. I, you know, I still have a little bit of nerves about it. But uh, hey, you know, if you had a good time and uh, you like what you see, drop a follow, a sub, whatever you like, or just come back next time. Uh, but this is where I'm going to end the stream. Uh, thank you all so much for tuning in. And uh, we'll see these lovely people next week. Bye, stream.